Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. And we're going to tell you the story of the blue light Uh, there was a soldier who worked for a king and he worked for him for a long time but then one day he was just too injured too wounded for to be useful and the king was like i you're useless to me now so go away i can't pay you he just walks. He feels miserable because the king uh, just he laid him off, essentially. Mm-hmm. And he just he's sad, so he's walking. He has to walk, uh, and he just walks and walks. And then he comes into a forest or a wood, as they call it. And uh, there's a he sees a, a in the distance a blue light, and he he just follows it. So he sees the the blue light, and he follows it. Uh, because obviously that has to lead to something good. Um, so he follows the blue light and ends up at a cottage. And he knocks on the door and a witch appears. And he asks if he could stay with her. And she's like, nothing's for free. But, she says, uh, you can stay here if you do me a favor. Uh, and I need you to dig up my garden. He says, okay. Like, uh, that's uh, yeah. He can't say anything else. <laughs> and then the next morning, he was working away to dig up her garden. But when night fall came, he was not done. He didn't finish. He no. worked his butt off, but he didn't finish it. And the witch is like, "Well, I see you can't do what I asked you to do, but I'll give you uh, an opportunity for another night if you tomorrow cut." logs for me for firewood and uh he's like uh well yeah i'll yeah i need a place to stay so of course it's a good idea um it's a good deal for me because it gets another night next morning he goes out and he starts splitting logs and then nightfall comes and he's not finished so the witch is like all right i'll give you a third night you can stay if you go to the well and fetch that that blue light that you saw earlier. You got to uh, because it, it fell down there and I need need it back. And uh, he's like, yeah, I you know I'm, I guess I'm working for a, a roof over my head. Only people with good intentions can go down into the well. <laughs> she, he says, yeah. And, and next morning, uh, she takes leads him to the well and. Uh, lowers him in with a a bucket and when he gets down there he finds the blue light and he's like all right this is pretty cool like this thing this is pretty nifty it is not burning out it's just lit forever so uh he goes down and he gets the blue light and and then she brings him up and but she stops like just far enough to where she could reach for it and uh, she was asking him to give give her the light but he, she wasn't it he could tell that it, they were that she had like malintentions and uh, he was like no I need both my feet on the dry land before uh, I'll give you the light and she got pissed she was like boy I've been giving you a roof <laughs> over your head <laughs> I've been I've been cut, giving you some slack for not finishing the shit that I asked you to do, even though I put a roof over your head. <laughs> and she gets pissed and she drops him down the well. Um, yeah, and he's like sad and he's in this well by himself and he's lonely. And how is he gonna get out? So he's like, you know what? If I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go high. <laughs> so pulls out his pipe. And he's like, good thing I have this blue light here that I could light it up. And This is just a perfect opportunity right now. Yeah. Like, 
he he uses the the blue light and he gets real real high and all of a sudden a uh, little black dude appears and he, he's like all right give, give I'm gonna give you grant your wishes and he's like well uh, this is real <laughs> now this is real because it talked to me and told me it's gonna grant your wishes and he's like well let's see if you're real I wish to get out of here the little black dude takes him out. Uh, underground passageway that leads them out of the the well, and uh, while they're get, getting out of the well, they they come to the witch's treasures that she had uh, collected over the years, and and dude, soldier duty uh, grabs as much as he can carry and takes it with him. Uh, the blue light was like, uh, "Do you need anything else?" And he's like, "Yeah, I want you to kill that witch." I want to take. I want you to go get the witch, and bind her up and take her to the judge. And sure enough, that she comes screaming by on a tomcat. Little dude ties her up and sends her to go get executed because uh, she was just gonna leave him to die in the well. Then he gets to the top and gets like clothes and like a, a hotel. Okay, so he gets himself some clothes and goes to the Holiday Inn. And uh, then he uh, he wishes on that that blue light one more time. He got to smoke another bowl when he gets home because he's been through a lot. Uh, he said, "You can call me if you need anything." The the fairy dude, mm. dude the blue fa- the blue light. Dude. He's like, "All you have to do is light up a bowl." Yeah. Sure. So he's just thinking about how mad he's at the king, and like can't believe that he did this to him. He's been so loyal all these years, and then he the king just throws him out. He has nothing to do, nowhere to go. Then he got in this predicament, and he was like, well, he put me in it, so I'm going to pay him back. He gets his pipe out, and he lights up a bowl. Lights up a bowl, and a little black dude comes out. The uh, soldier boy is like, I need revenge. I want the princess to come and do my bidding, do all my menial tasks. And uh, that's how I'm gonna get back at the the king. And he, he's like, I don't I don't advise it. It's probably not a good idea. But uh, you know, your call, buddy. And he goes and uh, he's like, you do as I say. And the guy's like, yeah, I do. So he goes and he gets the princess and she's sleeping and he brings her back to his inn. He, he's like, you do as I say. You, the sweep the floors and, and do the dishes and then uh, take my boots off she took off his boots and uh and he, he threw them at her and said clean them and she did it she did it and she was still kind of like sleeping so like maybe she was in a trance in a sleep like sleepwalking state mm-hmm. and she was just doing the because he said do it okay so it's in the morning now the little genie dude uh takes her back home and she wakes up and tells her dad the king about where she went and what happened in her crazy dream i was carried through the streets at lightning speed and taken to the room of a soldier i had to serve as a maid and do all kinds of medial work. I had to sweep the room and clean his boots. Of course, it was only Audrey. <laughs> and yet I am his tired <laughs> this morning as if I had done it all. So she tells her, her dad king that uh, all this happened and uh and he was like you know she says this is a dream but i think that this really happened so then he tells her just in case put a hole in your pocket and put these peas in your pocket so it'll leave leave a trail to this kidnapper's home so she does she takes i guess a bunch of peas well the little dude heard the genie overheard that and uh he he Threw a bunch of peas all over the town, like all over the streets, and uh, and then then took her and and the peas fell among all the rest of the peas, and uh, takes her to the inn, the dudes, the soldier dudes inn, 
soldier dude makes her do more menial work. And uh, the and daylight she did come, all the tasks. Did all the tasks. And then went home. Then it went home. Mm-hmm. And now she's telling her father that she had the dream again. And they went out to go find the peas, and then there are peas everywhere. Yeah, all the kids thought that it was raining peas. They were real excited about peas. Next time, she tells the king, uh, what's up? So this time, he's like, do me a favor. Next time it happens, I want you to leave your shoe. So the shoe, leave your shoe there, like Cinderella. Cinderella. The little dude overheard that again. And was told the soldier dude, "Hey, this, I really don't, I really don't recommend it this time. They're uh, they're laying down the law over there." And he's like, "No, I want it done, and I want it done now." He kidnapped her, and he got away with it. And he's like, "Dude, I don't think you should be doing this because it's not, it's not all right to be kidnapping this <laughs> chick and making her do your." And so when he told him. The, that they're coming back at you again. They're going to do another thing to try to get you. Uh, I really don't recommend it. I really don't recommend you continuing what you're doing. And he said, you little dude, you're my servant now. I mean, you did save my life out of that well, but now you're my uh, Do as I say. Mm. And he was like, you know, this guy. And brought her back and knew what was going to happen and and let it happen she left the shoe there and the king ordered for the entire town to be searched and and uh they they uh they found him obviously because the entire town is going to be searched and they're going to find it he gets caught they take him to prison. He forgets to grab the blue light and his treasures and uh, stuff he took from the witch. So then he's sitting there in his cell. And back then they had the cells that had the window right to the streets. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's sitting there at this window and he sees his friend walk by. And so he was like, hey, come here, please. Can you just go to my house and grab this bag and bring it back to me? And he had a ducat, which was a gold coin um, used back in the day. He had a he had a ducat in his uh, pocket and he offered it to his friend if he would go grab his from the house that was ransacked. He just ran off and he took the ducat and ran off and brought it to him. Little black dude came out and and he was like, yeah, he "If you need took anything, his pipe out and smoked a bowl yeah. and he used the flame." So the little man came. The dude uh, says, "If you need anything, trust me. Just keep the flame and we'll uh, I'll get you out of out of the out of the jam that's about to happen." Next next day he goes into the. Uh, the ch- the hanging gardens they're gonna hang him I and mean, he's not innocent but he didn't didn't harm anything uh, but uh, they sentenced him to death anyway and he's gonna because be it was hanged. the king's daughter it was yeah the king was pretty pissed and the and king's like do you have any last requests and he's like can I smoke a bowl before yeah. I die and just and he's like you know what you can smoke three bowls <laughs> but don't expect me to set you free. Uh, he's like, all right, and he lights, sparks up a, a bowl with the blue flame, the blue light, and uh, pops out, and he's he's holding a cudgel, the short, thick stick used as a weapon. And I guess he started to feel bad, and then he sympathized with him, and and this now he was just ready to do everything he could for the guy. He was like, you know what, I get where you're, where you're coming from. I'll go ahead and kill a bunch of people for you, <laughs> and get you out of your death sentence. Little dude kills everybody, and then uh, brings the king to his knees, and the king is like, please, please don't kill me. Um, if you don't kill me. I, I will give you my kingdom and my daughter, the princess. So he happily took that over killing the king for sending him out to die. And uh, he took the bride, took the kingdom, uh, and they lived happily ever after. Happily ever after. Except for the king. To close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.